The more you associate happiness with curiosity, the happier you'll be when your curiosity is satisfied. Welcome to the happy channel. It's TRS Clips. Do you look into this whole third eye angle? Like when people say, oh, your third eye opens up. Some people believe that it's the pineal gland. I've read a mm -hmm. spiritual book which said it's actually the activation of the medulla oblongata. Mm -hmm. Have you read any of this stuff? Well, I've heard about it. I've read about it, but uh, there is a neural, there there is a neuroscience base to it. Okay? okay, so it's again our brain has the ability to pick up things that maybe you and I cannot recognize. For example, you know, say a dog's brain. A dog can pick up a sound that you and I can't. There, mm. you know, there is there is a particular sound wave that you, you, we can't hear, but they can. There is something that is normal for us that is difficult for these kids. Are very, for example, they have a lot of sensory issues. Sound, you know, sound sometimes trouble them. What sound is normal for us, it becomes excessive for them. So the the third eye that we talk about, okay, it's a, a yes, the pineal gland has a role, but the pineal gland is more about our day and night and you know our general pattern. There's a pituitary gland that controls all the hormones, and below that there's an area called the hypothalamus the, above the pituitary gland that actually controls the this thing and all our emotional state, all our emotional brain and uh, you know the middle brain that I'm talking about directly communicates with the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland controls all our hormones. So every hormone from the thyroid to the, you know, to the every other hormone, the pancreas, our adrenals, our, our sexual hormones are all controlled by the pituitary, which is directly controlled by our emotional brain. So there is a strong connect. Now what happens is when in a particular state, all these things get activated to, and then you are able to, you know, it's like a great athlete can do things, let's say, um, a gymnast can in, do things that you and I can't do. In a state we have the of same. flow. In a state of flow, yeah. So a lot of things get synced. And when they get synced, they're able to see things. Many of our gurus, our spiritual gurus, have the ability to do that. I mean, they can they can actually see you and they can talk to you about a whole lot about who you are and what you do simply because they're able to pick up what you said. It's not just patterns, it's everything. It's 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 in your eyes, it's in your body language, it's in your facial muscles, it's it's in it's in your hand movements, it's how you sit, it's in like every little thing says a story. Now, you and I can't put it together, but maybe somebody can put one, two, three, four, five and Okay. okay. That that that's how it is. Do you have anything to say about DMT, ayahuasca, and all these? No. 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 Mm. Is there any truth? To the fact that I mean, this is what you read about on the internet mm -hmm. that your pineal gland releases DMT when you dream right before the moment of your death. Yeah. Is there any truth to that? Uh, there, there is. There are theories to that. Okay, but this okay. is not something I've actively researched. So okay, normally, fair. I don't talk about things that I haven't researched. I, I read about. I've read about. It, I know about it, but I'm not the expert. I've not gone into that okay. in great detail. Does your mind as a neurosurgeon mm -hmm. kind of deep dive into all these spiritual things that Absolutely. we? Absolutely. So what is the aspect of Indian or Eastern spirituality that you think is exactly in sync with modern day neuroscience other than like pranayama and yoga and what we spoke about, mm. like Kundalini Jagran and all these things. Mm. Are you familiar with these? Yeah, yeah. Mm. So what is fascinating for you as a neuroscientist? You are a neuroscientist. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. So actually uh, it's very interesting because whatever is said spiritually, whatever is said in our ancient texts, you know, the Vedas and the Upanishads and everything else, you take that and then you take the writing of scientists like Einstein, Rutherford and all that and you see they're actually a match. In fact, um, you know, there's a wonderful book called Tao of Physics by Fritz of Capra. You know, you must read that book and the cover of the book actually there is a picture of Shiva as Nat Natraj and it's superimposed, um, I don't know, now that on, on the atom, you know, the you know, the, our atom, finally, right. if you go, you know, and that the Natraj is a form of uh, the, the atom. Nucleus. nucleus. Yeah. So in that book, the whole book is nothing but something from the Upanishad and something from Einstein. And the whole book is just a flow of science and spirituality. Spiritual, see, spirituality is an explanation of science to people who did not know about science. I mean, at that time, you could not talk about all this. So the same thing was put in an easy to understand manner. Okay. Today, in other words, today, science is validating our spirituality. Mm. Okay. Whatever was said earlier. Okay. Science is sort of proving it, validating it to be correct. So they actually are looking at the same thing. Uh, just you're looking at it differently. Here you're looking at it from base of what's happening in the laboratory. And there you're looking at it from a larger perspective that an ordinary man can understand. Sure. You know? 
basically at the end there's this concept of what is called everything nothing okay so it's like suppose i take you i take you right i break you down so you are your skin bones heart liver kidney i break that down its tissues your cells and then finally what are they there are proteins and there are you know fats and you know all that and there's water so big chunk of you is water so let's just take water what what is water h2o okay so h is hydrogen o is oxygen so what is oxygen is basically a proton okay and it's got electrons going around it so if i go deep 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 down into you you are a collection of protons and electrons what are electrons they are bundles of energy which are rotating around the proton right now if i do the same thing if i go down to this cup okay keep going down to the last again i'm going to see the same thing i'm going to see protons because at the mm-hmm. fundamental level the same thing is true of a tree in africa of the snow on the north pole of a, of of a rock on the moon of a you know piece of dust in a galaxy far away so when you go down to the fundamental level of who we are is actually all the same hmm. okay protons and electrons protons and electrons okay so when you go down to nothing because you know because after that there is nothing you know you also see everything okay because and and if you see most you know whether you read the read about buddha or mahavi they actually talk of the same thing that that everything and nothing is the same so when you go down there you become part of everything and a lot of power of prayer or of intention of willing is that because when you vibrate at that level things happen because it's all the same mm. i mean if you start seeing things so when you will for something you know you actually what happens at that level affects things everywhere else so there is a difference between everything nothing and something <clears throat> okay let me try to make it simple let's say an ocean is made of you know water drops of water so if you have a drop of water coming onto the beach now it is something why is it something because there's a drop and what is around that is not a drop so it is something but it is powerless it's just lying there it's a drop it is something but it's a drop and we keep believing we are something now when the drop let's say goes back into the ocean can you see it it becomes nothing but it also becomes part of everything it's part of the ocean okay mm. it's got the entire power and strength of the emotion of the waves of a tsunami and everything else so we keep believing we are something and when we keep thinking we are something because it's all our ego pride ye wo me my my you know if you can shift and see yourself as nothing when you make yourself nothing you also become part of everything you don't become everything mm. you become part of everything so more spirituality and science merges this the whole concept of everything nothing okay i would love to see a conversation between you and dr sid warrior at some point mm-hmm. we've had a lot of conversations like this yeah. uh, he's a young neurologist mm-hmm. and i'd love to just see you to go at it mm-hmm. um what i do wish to say is uh, something that he taught me on this show mm-hmm. which is that and please correct me if i'm wrong because you're the authority here there is a part of your brain that identifies with the self Yes. In terms of when I stretch out my arm, mm. I know exactly where my fingertip is. Mm. Now I know where my fingertip is because my brain is telling me that's the edge of your body, and beyond mm. that is air, and the camera, etc., mm. and the rest of the world. Mm. Um, parallelly, there's the limbic system, which is the animalistic yeah, side right. of yeah, your brain. Yeah, all yeah. your roti, kapda, makan, yeah, uh, absolutely. All your instinctual behaviors. Mm. Uh, I believe that one of the theories is that when you keep meditating. and you go till the point of nirvana or moksha enlightenment because mm-hmm. that's the basis of all advanced meditations that you can find in all these indian yoga schools mm-hmm. that you keep meditating you keep practicing your yoga up till the point where you reach nirvana mm-hmm. but physiologically and neurologically what's probably happening there's two things one you're gaining complete control over your limbic system absolutely uh, that's correct your yeah. upper brain is becoming the more dominant yes. brain yeah. because you said that life is just a series of your upper brain and your lower brain fighting fighting yeah uh but the second thing is that this part of your brain mm. that identifies with the self with the ego mm. reduces in activity yes completely mm. where you then realize that the tip of my fingers is not actually the end of me mm-hmm. it's probably way beyond that mm. uh and then i'm sure there's some more stuff that happens you can't articulate in mm-hmm. words mm-hmm. uh but i've been reading a lot about the effects of deep meditative states mm-hmm. on the brain that's mm-hmm. what fascinates me even though i'm not a neuroscientist but i'm mm-hmm. getting to learn a lot through the show mm-hmm. uh i know for a fact that i have had some very deep meditations where 45 minutes into an hour in mm-hmm. i'm still meditating i know that i'm not asleep 
but i also don't know my name or my gender or what i am or who i am really? okay. i just know i'm like meditating mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because at this point i'm not chanting the chant the chant is chanting me mm-hmm. so i would like to know what your theory is about the neuroscience of whatever i said no um whatever you said is is completely accurate okay and what meditation does really is you know gives more control to your higher brain over the lower brain that's the fundamental of meditation and it is so and eventually what is what is nirvana if you you read the description of nirvana it is basically when you realize you are nothing you know you come down to your nothingness and then you become part of everything so the fundamental of that is as long as we believe we are something something you can never experience because then something can be hurt something can be anything that is something can be hurt can be damaged and i learned this in a very interesting lesson when i was a medical student i went to learn judo at a class in dadar and you know i was i'm the six foot thing and the teacher said first lesson he called he called, he called a small kid you know and he said try to hit him so i can't hit a kid he said so you have to do it that's the first step try to hit him so well i went i didn't i went i did this and try to hit him and what the kid did is he just moved up he was standing here he moved to the side he took my hand and flipped me over <laughs> you know okay now as normally what do you do if you hit me i'm something so i hit back i counter so this is life that is what we do in our life you do this i do this and we go on what did he do he just moved to the side no you know so what was there now nothing okay and then what he used is he took my hand and he flipped me he used my energy and that's when i realized the power of nothing see there was nothing there when he moved away there was nothing to hit and then he just did this and i went flying on the other side a small kid tossed a six do you understand the concept so it's when you reach that stage of nothingness okay which comes from meditation but i also say see meditation you know i believe in meditation i believe in the power of meditation however there's an entire younger generation okay who will not accept meditation uh, as something that they would like to do you know and for them i i i propose a different form of meditation is having a purpose in life that is also meditative if there's something that drives you if there's something that motivates you if there's something that wakes you up in the morning if something that keeps you thinking at night that is a meditative state like for you this show this is your life now okay it's your form of meditation okay so uh, w- once you have that it, it's an alignment with the thinking of napoleon hill that to be successful to have a definite chief aim in life once you have something then that becomes a meditative state because your mind is now completely you know aligned with that and then in that once again you become nothing you become part of everything and the most miraculous things happen when you reach the stage of nothing everythingness the right people and when there's something that you want with all your heart there's a difference between willing and wishing all of us wish you know you wish you are rich you wish you are wish you are successful there's a difference between willing and wishing will is something which you intend where your entire mind your body your heart your cells your brain you know the entire brain power 100 million neurons that you have are now burning with that one thing and then what that does is it attracts it attracts the right amount of money it attracts the right amount of resources it attracts people so whatever you want instead of you going to get it it comes to you okay yeah. how much of the brain is truly locked up because there is an internet theory that says that 90% of your brain is actually locked up yeah so we we don't have accurate figures on that but i i would say i would say def, you know it could be anywhere between 50 and i would say about at least half our brain is not okay. completely open to us what is in the half so our subconscious you know our our hurts our fears our you know whatever has happened in the past that we don't want to confront is all locked up over there okay. so um so that's why meditation so either meditation because meditation relieves that or having a purpose in life something to do something that matters to you that's why you know i started this conversation by asking you i want to know what made you the runway you are today because that is important that is a form of meditation you are actually showing everybody else that when you walk your own path you can do whatever is that this is something that matter to you all right so yes you know sitting sitting in meditation is great is wonderful there's nothing more powerful than meditation right but there's a generation today that may not want to do it because they think of meditation as something older people do you know yogi you know it's to be done in an ashram and you know 
So I'm saying having a purpose is another form of meditation. I don't know if that makes sense to you. No, no, I hear you. It's yeah. see, basically, when you're talking about dhyana or like yeah. meditation that you yeah. sit down for, it always boils down to one of two things: coming yeah. back to your breath, or coming down to a mantra, yeah. Yeah. or coming back to a visualization. Mm-hmm. That's the third one. Yeah. Uh, you're basically coming back to an anchor. Absolutely. What you're trying yeah. to say yeah. is that as long as you have that one force that's anchoring your life. Yes. Uh, your neurons align to absolutely all your neurons you align yeah. peaceful peaceful yeah and then there there is happiness there is contentment there is joy you make a difference and and the fascinating thing I found is when you are like that things come to you you know mm. otherwise you are going on life chasing you are going and trying to get things once once this is there the right thing the right people you know whatever it is I mean you know I started off working at Sion Hospital we started practice I've Today I have two hospitals. I have a neurological hospital. I've got an anti-aging hospital. We are shortly opening up a facility in the Bahamas. You know, there's a huge project. We are starting our work there, uh, and, and that's that's where a great pride that you know we are going to be right there. The Americas are doing the same work. Everything came. The people came. The resources came. The money came. You know, all of, I didn't go looking for anything. It actually came to me. Okay. So when you are in that state, everything everything comes to you. So once you get that and. That that is meditation as well, and in that you're you know you you become healthier, your mind is alert, your you know everything else starts uh, moving in a very very uh, synchronized kind of uh, focus space. But it's important to take out the worms from the brain first. Yeah, okay. <laughs> which I have. The, and the example I like to give is you know sun the sun can shine on this piece of paper for a thousand years and nothing will happen, but if you put a lens, what happens? It burns. You know that if you put a lens, it burns. So what won't happen with the sun rays for a hundred years or a thousand years? Just putting a lens, it it burns that paper. Why? Because the rays get concentrated. concentrated. Okay. So the moment we have that, bring about that, uh, things happen. You. That's what brings about change. That's what brings about innovation. Okay. We have evolved from cavemen to this present state because of that. Because of people who have evolved, innovated, uh, disrupted the present way of thinking, and gone ahead. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out this playlist for more videos just like this. It's the artist clips.